Hi, and welcome to the Biotech Builder training video series that we put out uh, about quarterly. Uh, for this posting, I am here in the lab retrieving some yeast plates to do an experiment with some students next week. And it occurs to me that this might be a good time to review the difference between petri dishes that are used to grow yeast and petri dishes that are used to grow bacteria, since the BioBuilder Labs uh, use both of those organisms in their experiments. Um, so I thought we could take a look at the petri dishes uh, components and then uh, look at the ways we spread and uh, patch and grow the cells uh, in those two situations. All right, so we're gonna walk over to the fridge where we keep our petri dishes next. So going into our storage area for our lab, this is our upright refrigerator. Um, that is where we keep our Petri dishes, uh, both the sterile ones uh, and the ones that we have streaked out. So um, over here on the right are the LB auger plates. These are the ones that we use for growing bacteria. Um, you see that these have uh, tryptone, yeast extract, uh, salt, and one and a half percent auger. So those are used for growing bacteria. Here's a streaked out bacterial plate um, for uh, some of the BioBuilder labs. Um, next to it, here's another sleeve of Petri dishes that have uh, not been streaked out yet. These are called YPD. Uh, and uh, Y is yeast extract, P is peptone, and D is dextrose or glucose. So those are the components that you see. These are used for growing yeast. Uh, and this is a streak of um, the yeast that we use for BioBuilder's golden bread experiment, the one that uh, have been engineered, the yeast have been engineered to make beta carotene, although they make it unreliably. So um, I am going to pull some of these Petri dishes out and uh, start to spread and grow some cells on them. Okay, so we're back in the lab now, and what I thought I would do is show you two ways to streak out yeast. Um, in my experience, a lot of instructors are familiar with growing bacterial cells on uh, Petri dishes. Uh, so uh, E. coli on Luria broth, LB, with or without antibiotics, so plus or minus ampicillin. Um, and in the BioBuilder labs, there are two ways that we grow cells on those petri dishes. In some cases, and here's an example, we're going to want to streak the cells for single colonies, streak the strain out for single colonies, and you can see on this petri dish with the bacteria, there's an area on the petri dish that's very dense, uh, and then an area on the petri dish that has single colonies, and we would use single colonies for growing liquid overnight cultures um, because they would be clonal, they'd be all the same coming from a single colony. The other way that we grow bacterial cells for uh, the transformation lab in particular, the Colorful World Lab, is to grow them in uh, squares, in patches, like what is shown here, where there is just a dense area of cells, and we grow a patch of cells like this in order to scoop them all up and uh, use them for uh, the transformation, to make those cells competent uh, for our transformation experiments. So um, what I'd like to do is uh, show how to streak cells like this using the yeast plates. You'll see that um, the process is pretty much identical to streaking out bacterial cells. But uh, again, what I need to do is streak out this golden yeast strain, the golden bread strain, which has um, beta carotene. Uh, production in the yeast, but you see that the beta carotene production is quite unstable. There are orange cells growing on this petri dish, both in the very dense area and then also in the single colony area. Um, some of those cells are orange, but many of them are white, uh, and some are red, and some are yellow, um, and that is because this strain is unstable. And the golden bread experiment is an effort to build in reliability in the production of beta carotene in this strain. So let me show you how to streak out the yeast using these YPD Petri dishes that uh, I just pulled out of the fridge. We have a video on how to open um, loops and serological pipettes so that they remain sterile um, and uh, just 
as a quick review, the area that we want to touch the yeast to is this loop area. Um, every The piece of plastic in here, this loop is sterile. Uh, it has no microbes growing on it. It's um, gone through a, a process to remove all those microbes. So when I open this, I'm going to open the side that um, I'm going to touch with my gloved hand. Now, having touched it, it is no longer sterile, but I can keep the loop of this Petri dish from touching other things. And I can now touch an area of this Petri dish. I'm gonna scoop up a single orange colony. And you see that it does not take very much to start to streak for single cells on a Petri dish of YPD agar. And I'm gonna take this single loop of cells and I'm just going to touch uh, an area of this Petri dish you can see here, I've just made a very small circle of yeast on the surface of this sterile YPD plate. And now this loop is done. I'm gonna put it into our, our waste container for um, bleaching later. Now, the cells that I've just uh, spotted onto this Petri dish, I'm gonna wanna spread them out and dilute them, effectively dilute them, so that the first area I spread is going to be quite dense and then the next area I spread will be less dense and the final area I spread will, I hope, have single colonies. And so for each of these, I need a single uh, new um, loop and I will open the loop. Again, not touch the loop to anything except the cells that I am trying to streak. And I am going to go, let's see if I can do this upside down, take the spot that you see of yeast and go with the sterile loop back and forth and back and forth, just skating over the surface of the Petri dish and ending with a small section that I am going to then use uh, to spread the rest of the, of the cells. So you can see that I have spread out um, those yeast that were in a spot now across uh, one of the areas of the Petri dish. And then I'm gonna take another loop and I'm going to again open it keep the loop itself uh, from touching other things. And I'm gonna use that very last area, that area of the cells that um, is diminished um, to go back and forth and back and forth across and spread the cells from the dense area now this direction so that we are um, reducing the number of cells across the surface of the Petri dish. And again, that um, loop we get rid of. And the final loop, the last one here, is going to take the most um, dilute or the, the fewest cells in that area of the Petri dish that I just streaked. And uh, again, go back and forth and back and forth like this to be able to um, now uh, spread the yeast out still more across the surface of the Petri dish. And so I will grow this. Um, it will take uh, two days at least to get colonies on YPD and they grow not at 37 degrees, but usually at 28 or at 30 degrees um, in um, an incubator. So it will take a couple more days to get colonies that look like these. Um, but that will allow uh, me to then carry out the experiment with these students next week to um, try to make this strain that makes beta carotene a little bit more reliable. And this is part of the synthetic biology um, section of Biotech Builder and also the golden bread section of BioBuilder. Um, to make the patch area um, like this, um, we would do the same thing but on the surface of a Petri dish, just make um, one dense area like what we would see here for the bacteria. Um, I will do that separately in order to patch the yeast. This is what I would do if I needed to freeze the yeast. So the protocol for freezing the yeast is to make a patch of yeast uh, and then scoop that patch into 15% sterile glycerol and store it at minus 80. So if I wanted to make a patch of yeast, um, which I will do and I'll show you what they look like um, after they've grown, um, that is how I would store the strain away uh, for safekeeping and for long-term storage. 
So you may or may not have been able to tell that I forgot to bring one more loop to the bench when it was time to make those patches of yeast cells. So here's a uh, recording of me trying to do this uh, with my phone uh, while I also streak this out. Um, but you'll see I scooped up a single colony uh, of yeast and with the patch go back and forth and back and forth over a uh, rectangular or square area on the surface of the YPD plate. One loop is enough, and then this Petri dish gets incubated with the others, 48 hours at 30 degrees. And this is what it looks like, the patch of yeast on the left and the single colonies on the right for the BioBuilder labs or for the Biotech Builder labs that are relevant to repairing the yeast so that they perform reliably. That's it. Thanks. We'll see you soon.